I had been spending a lot of time in shift shocker. Right. And, you know, it's interesting because when you read a book, how many of you skip the forward, right? You go right to chapter one, right, Kim? And you're like, no, nope, not going to read that forward stuff. And I think I probably did that as well. And I've gone back and I've read the forward. Not, not only that, but I've read it, reread it, reread it, reread it. And I think it's one of my favorite parts of the book. So I want to chat with you today about something I read in the forward. Now, challenge, uh, I left my reading glasses at home, so I can't see. <laughs> so hang in there with me, guys. It's a good thing I've read it so many times. I do have most of this memorized. All right. At the top, Brian Tracy, quote, you cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude towards what happens to you. And in that, you will be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. Now, if you've got the shift book, if you're reading along with me at home, if you wrote down what I just said, uh, what two words would I take out of that quote that would change the quote completely? Listen to it again, okay? You cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude towards what happens to you. And in that, you will be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. Now, what two words do you think I want to take out of that quote? Okay. Yeah, you in control. Say it one more time, Lance. You and control. Okay. And, and Kim said uh, cannot, right? Okay. And, and you know, there's no right, wrong, wrong answers, by the way. So if you're hesitating, you're like, oh boy, I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> there's no wrong answers. This is just my opinion, by the way. All right. Here's, here's, Here's the two words I'm thinking of, to you, to you. Now listen, just listen to the first part of the quote and then I'm gonna reread it to you without to you being a part of it. You cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude towards what happens to you. And in that you will be mastering change. Now let's reread it without to you in the quote. You cannot control what happens, but you can control your attitude towards what happens. And in that, you will be mastering change. So if you're taking notes, remember that's code for take notes. I want you to write down, life does not happen to us. It just happens. You know, I think of adversity. And so often when faced with adversity, the first thing we ask is, why me? Why did this happen to me? I think of my friend who was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer a year ago and passed away in April. Did that happen to him? I think it's a matter of perspective. It just happens. Life just happens. Look at it this way. It doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. The difference between to us and for us is a matter of perspective. And perspective is the only thing that can dramatically change the outcome of an event without changing any of the facts. Now, Gary goes on in the, preface, in the foreword to talk about his definition of success. And He's bottom of the middle of the page, second paragraph, third line. He shares, we repeatedly hear someone say that success isn't easy and quickly nod our heads in agreement. So do you agree with that? Is success hard? Gary goes on to say, I almost say that I'm not sure that it's hard either. In other words, success may not be easy, but it also may not be hard. Now he defines success simply as accepting a challenge. So if you're taking notes, the first step towards success is accept a challenge. In other words, I'm going to list four homes a month. 
I'm going to list 48 homes over the next 12 months. I'm going to <clears throat> sell uh, 60 homes in the next 12 months. I'm going to list four homes a month. I'm going to list 48 homes over the next 12 months, and I'm going to sell 60 homes in the next 12 months. That's a challenge, right, Kim? Okay, so accept the challenge. Now, the next step is get into action. When you get into action, you will be faced with results that come very, very hard. And you will be faced with results that come very, very easy. Now, I'll give you an example. Here's a challenge. Knock on 20 doors a day. Right? Challenge accepted. Now you go out and you knock on 20 doors in 95 degree heat it, and nobody is interested in selling their home. You don't get one new lead from knocking on those 20 doors. The only thing you gained by knocking on those 20 doors is you burned a lot of calories and you sweated off a lot of water weight. I mean, that's a good thing too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Right? Women, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, hard. Would you agree with that? Success, the, the conversation we're having here is success easy or is it hard? I would define that as hard. You knocked on 20 doors, you got no results, hard. The next day you go out and knock on 20 doors and the very first person who opens their door is interested in listing their house and they hire you. Easy. Now, you didn't do anything different than you did the day before. You did exactly the same thing. You took exactly the same actions. And one day it was hard, and the next day it was easy. So success can be hard, and it can be easy. But in order for us to experience either one, what do we need to do first? Get into, get into, one person in the room knows the answer. Get into action. action. What does action mean to you? Action. Can I share with you what action means to me? Yes. Say, say yes, because I'm yes. going to do it anyways. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, Shirley. All right. So here's how I see success in real estate. There's five things that make up your 20%. Those five things are lead generation, meeting with buyers and sellers, taking seller listings, writing offers, nego negotiating contracts, and practicing and role-playing your scripts. In other words, Aaron, if I'm going to get into action every single day, my action is focused on lead generation, meeting with buyers and sellers, taking seller listings, writing offers and negotiating contracts, and practicing and role-playing my scripts. And what's number one? It's lead generation. It's lead generation. Let me do this again. So there's five things. There's five things that, that make up your 20%. The five things that you need to get in action with every single day. Number one, lead generation. Number two, meet with buyers and sellers. Number three, take seller listings. Number four, write offers and negotiate contracts. And number five, practice and role play your scripts. By the way, if you said practice and role play your scripts, I get it. I understand why you said it because we do that first thing in the morning before we get in lead generation. Okay, so you're off the hook. All right, now, action. I'm gonna work 50 weeks. I'm gonna take two weeks off. That means I'm gonna work five days a week for 50 weeks. I'm working 250 days. And I'm going to speak to 20 people a day. That means I'm going to have 5,000 conversations in the next 12 months. And I'm going to focus first on building relationships in my database. My first focus every single day is those care calls to my sphere of influence. In other words, 
because they're on a 36 touch, including one phone call every three months or one call a quarter, I'm going to speak with everybody in my sphere of influence four times a year minimum. And it's a care call. It's not a sales call. It leads with gratitude. Thank you for taking my call. My job is to bring value to every single conversation. As a local economist of choice, as a strategic pricing professional, it's my job to bring value to every single one of these people that I'm speaking to, right? I'm playing golf this weekend, and one of the guys that I'm playing golf with asked me, where do you think the housing market is going? Great question. And if I'm not studying the market, if I don't spend an insane amount of time studying the real estate market, then how could I answer that question? I can wing it, or I can actually provide him with real data that would provide value. By the way, it did. The conversation ended with total stranger, by the way, with him asking me for my phone number because he wants to stay in touch with me because he's interested in selling his home. Shocker, right? Well, guess what? I don't sell real estate. I coach and train real estate agents. And what do you think I did? I got his contact information. Because just giving him my contact information doesn't count as a lead. It's a conversation, but it's not a lead. It's a lead when I ask him for his contact information. Hey, by the way, why don't you give me your phone number? Because I don't carry business cards with me and I'll send you my contact information. If you give me your address, I'll set you up on this really cool neighborhood nurture so you can keep an eye on what's going on in your neighborhood. And what's your email while we're talking? All right, that quick, that simple. I got name, phone number, email address, and mailing address. And then back to golf because I don't like to sell real estate on the golf course. All right, now I'm having conversations with my sphere of influence. I'm leading with gratitude. I'm bringing value to every conversation. And when you make enough deposits, you get to make a withdrawal, Juanita. In other words, hey, Juanita, just out of curiosity, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home in the next six months? Make sure every single conversation includes you're making deposits first, and then you're asking just out of curiosity, who do you know? All right. So part of my 20 conversations is to build relationship with my database. The other part of those 20 conversations is I'm building a pipeline. I'm calling for sell by owners. Especially today, I'm calling expired listings every single day. Hey, I noticed your listing came off the market and I'm just curious, are you still interested in selling your home? If I had a full price offer on your home today, would you want me to bring you the offer? I'm circle prospecting around properties that just sold. Hey, we just sold a home in your neighborhood or, or a home in your neighborhood just sold, which is great news. The challenge now is there's still buyers that are interested in buying great homes like yours. And just out of curiosity, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home in the next six months? Now, I have two standards as I'm making these 20, as I'm, as I'm connecting with 20 people a day, 250 days a year for 5,000 connections, my Standard number one is plus one new met in my database every day, which means in the next 12 months, I'm adding 250. My other standard is plus one face-to-face -face appointment with someone who is thinking of selling their home in the next six months. Now, let's go back to what Gary says or talks about in the foreword. While success can be hard, it can also be very easy. The key to experience hard and easy, number one, accept the challenge. Number two, get into action. Success, simply put, is the result of accepting the challenge, 
Number two, getting into action. And then, then number three, consistently and persistently showing up every day in those lead generation activities. Now, notice I haven't said anything about going on appointments. I haven't said anything about taking seller listings, writing offers, and negotiating contracts because lead generation is number one. Until lead generation is done, nothing else matters. Until lead generation is done, everything else is a distraction. So is everyone else. And when I'm having 20 conversations a day and I'm adding one new person to my database every single day, I'm building what? I'm building a big database. In MREA, Gary says that the size of your business is directly proportionate to the size of your database. Okay, if the size of my business is directly proportionate to the size of my bit to the to my database, and I want to have a big business, then what will I need? A big database. And that happens by adding one new person to your database every day over time. A year from now, Nick, your database will be whatever you have in your database today, plus 250 because you've added one new met to your database every single day. And the way that sounds really simple is, hey, by the way, my name is John Dietz. Can I ask your name? Sure, Madeline. Madeline, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So, without, your... without all this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting here. Like what if I didn't have the hair? Sorry, continue. Okay, so they should be taking notes on how to sell more real estate, and they're more interested in the fact that I shave. <laughs> we know it. We know it. Okay. <laughs> we know it. All right. All right, so back to the conversation. <laughs> nice to meet you. And by the way, I'm a real estate agent. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like to keep my friends and family members updated on the market. And I'd love to add you to that list. And now what that means is I will send you interesting information on the real estate market once a month. So I'm not a pest, just like once a month, right? Okay. And then I'll call every three or four months just to check in. Okay. Would it be okay if I added you to that group? Sure. All right. Now, if you deliver that in, in script, right? For those of you who have been in the room for, with me for a couple of years, seven years for Michael Topo, God bless Michael Topo for continuing to come and listen to me for seven years. He's probably banging his head against the wall going, oh my God, <laughs> when is he going to say something new? Um, <laughs> when this stops working is the answer to that, by the way. Okay, now, when you show up every day and you're having those conversations just the way I did, because the laughs, the smiles, everything is the same as you've heard it a thousand times, right? If I have that conversation with 20 people a day, Nick, is somebody going to say yes? Somebody? Yeah. yeah. You know, when you nod your head on Zoom, it doesn't work because the people on Zoom can't hear you. It's like being in the courtroom. You know, you got to talk loud enough because that stenographer can't write down. He nodded his head. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> OK, now when you call 20 expired today, Juanita, hey, I noticed your listing came off the market. Just out of curiosity, are you still interested in selling your home? Script, write it down. No, I'm not. Go away. You, you, no good, dirty rot realtor. And if I had a full price offer today, would you want me to bring you the offer? Now, are you going to get yes from one person? Is somebody going to say yes that day? Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. They are. When you circle prospect a neighborhood over and over and over again, and you tell every single person who answers the phone, hey, the reason I'm calling today is because a home in your neighborhood recently sold, which is great news. And the challenge now is we still have buyers that are looking for great homes like yours. And I'm just curious, Noah, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home in the next six months? When you have that conversation over and over and over again, are you eventually going to get somebody who says, I'm thinking of selling my home? Yes, you are. So accept a challenge, get into action. And sometimes the results are going to come easy and sometimes they're going to come hard. Success is neither hard nor easy. 
It's fault law, success is simple and not easy. Now, you're adding 250 people to this pipeline because your standard is you're going to find one person every day who's thinking of selling their home. The next step that's going to get you to the desired result is follow-up. Success doesn't happen in that appointment. That's a myth. Those of you who are coming up to me and saying, John, I went on a for sale by owner appointment, or John, I went on an expired listing appointment, and I didn't get the listing, so therefore I failed, you're missing the point. Mm -hmm. Okay? The purpose of the conversation is to get the appointment. The purpose of the appointment is to create a foundation and a relationship to follow up from. Now, week one. Hey, Nick, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, following up his promise. Just want to give you a call. Thank you for taking time out of your day to meet with me. You have an absolutely beautiful home, and I'd love the opportunity to help you sell your home. And I just wanted to ask, do you have any questions or is there anything I can do for you today? That's it. That's the call. Now, the next week, hey, Madeline, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, following up his promise, just checking in. How's the sale of your home going to a for sale by owner or to an expired listing? Juanita, I know you said you were going to wait three or four months before your home, you put your home back on the market. So I'm not calling to relist your house. I just want to check in, see how are you? And is there anything I can do for you today? No, I'm good. Go away. Don't ever call me again. Call following week. Hey, Nick, John Dietz, following up as promised. Now, this guy just told me never to call him again, right? And I'm calling. Mm -hmm. because I follow up forever. I reject rejection. No is not a word that lives in my vocabulary. No simply means not yet. People will never change their mind, but they will make a new decision based on new information. They will never change their mind if you don't give them an opportunity to change their mind. So Nick, John Dietz, following up his promise, checking in, how are you? And is there anything I can do for you, right? Next week, it's the same thing. Now I followed up once a week for four weeks. Now... I'm going to change strategy slightly, and I'm going to follow up once a month for how long? Forever. Forever. Okay. Forever. 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 Until they list their home, they sell their home, or I die. Those are the three reasons that I can stop calling. Otherwise, I'm going to keep calling. Now, success is the result of accepting a challenge, 20 conversations a day. It's getting into action, consistent and persistent action. And sometimes success will be easy and sometimes it will be hard. And the key to you hitting your goals is that daily action. Now, I'm going to share one more thing with you if I can find it without my glasses because it's really, really important. Gary shares in the very last paragraph of the opening to the book. You could have picked up this book for a lot of reasons, but regardless of your reasons, hopefully the outcomes you seek is to become the best you can professionally be in the real estate business by running with the best. Please write that down running with the best and doing what the best do. Running with the best and doing what the best do. If that's true, this book was written for you. So here's the question I want you to ask yourself. Are you running with the best? And are you doing what the best do? All right, talk to me. What'd you guys hear? <laughs>